Welcome to the Next Level Casino Careers Show, a series highlighting industry tips and insights from the best minds in the casino and hospitality industry. Enjoy the show. Grant Irons, how are you doing today? Doing well, Kyle. How are you doing? I'm doing well. You know, I'm just so privileged to have you do this episode with us today. Um, you know, Next Level Casino Careers, we're all about helping people mm-hmm. take their career to the next level. Um, learning from people's stories, their insights, and just super excited today to have a former NFL player, right? Played for the Raiders, Notre Dame standout. Uh, I know we'll touch on that. And also a high school scholar athlete of the year. And also more importantly too, some of the things that you've done kind of since you've retired from the NFL, owning your own business, you know, so you're a really busy guy. So just to start, I want to thank you for appearing on the show today. Hey, thank you, Kyle. I really appreciate you. Really appreciate this invitation. And first and foremost, I want to thank Peter Arceo, uh, General Manager uh, of Yamava Resort and Casino. I really appreciate, you know, everything that he's done, his leadership, and I'm really excited for this podcast. Yeah. Shout out to to Peter. Um, Grant, Grant, to start, uh, you know, we always like to do what I call the origin story. You know, you, your your name speaks for itself, but if you wouldn't mind, in your own words, kind of give the three to four minute backstory on where you grew up, kind of touch on your football career a little bit, and ultimately what you're doing today. Absolutely, that's a great question, Kyle. Um, I'm originally from uh, the Woodlands, Texas. It's about 45 minutes north of Houston. As you mentioned, uh, in high school, I was the number one scholar athlete in the nation. Um, it's an interesting story. I basically. I won the award it's called a Dollar Award. I won it in '96. Tiger Woods actually won it in 1993 and presented it to me um, in Phoenix, Arizona. So from an early on, for an early on start, um, I really got a chance to see what greatness looks like. Got a chance to have a you know a sit down with Tiger Woods really when he was at his peak um, at the pinnacle and really I mean just to see his confidence. From there, um, a little background about myself. Uh, my parents, they were high school sweethearts. Uh, they were married 50 years, so very close, very close to my family. I have two older brothers. Um, my oldest brother graduated University of Nebraska. He's actually a college professor here in uh, Houston, Texas, and also a counselor. Uh, then my second uh, brother, Jared Irons, he actually is two-time captain. Of, um, he was two-time captain of the University of Michigan football team. And we have a little robbery right there, but it's all, it's all love, right? And then um, we're actually business partners in a lot of our uh, business uh, ventures as well. So I'll I'll get into that later on. But um, from a family perspective, family is everything to me. And I I definitely uh, believe in that. You know, from from, so from the Woodlands, Texas, I went on to uh, graduate from the University of Notre Dame. Uh, My major was actually management information systems. It's a combination of business and computers. I went on to graduate school there. Um, and, 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 and really enjoyed that experience. And then from there, I went and played six. Well, actually I played with my rookie year. I played with the Buffalo Bills. I played defensive end and, uh, and actually linebacker. Um, when I moved on to, uh, the, the, now it's the Las Vegas Raiders, uh, it was the, the Oakland Raiders, but now the Las Vegas Raiders. And, um, I really had a great experience. I mean, it was a, actually a dream come true. You know, with my father playing 10 years in NFL, you know, he played a lot of his teammates, you know, actually ended up being my coaches. So if you think about Art Shell, um, Fred Belenikoff, a lot of those legends were actually my coaches going up um, and playing when I was with the Raiders. And so now, you know, I want to retire when I was young and healthy. I did a leadership program at Stanford and went into the uh, medical field, so medical device sales. So I actually been in medical device sales probably about almost 10 to 15 years selling medical devices for, you know, knee um, ACL surgeries, shoulder surgeries. Um, and then I got a chance to, op- the opportunity to sell medical devices, uh, for hearts and brains. And, um, you know, now I actually, um, I'm, I'm grateful, uh, to become a, a business owner, um, in partnership, uh, with my brother, Jerry Irons. Um, he actually, uh, we, we do a lot of different business ventures inside healthcare and outside healthcare. Um, I actually, um, one, one of the things I'm really proud of and grateful for is that we're actually executive partners uh, with the Pro Football Hall of Fame Health, uh, specifically behavioral health. 
where we actually make an impact in society, uh, really give back to our military veterans and professional athletes that, um, that, that, that need assistance when it comes to that, when it comes to behavioral health and mental fitness. So that's a real uh, personal um, and really close to my heart. And so I'm, I'm very grateful uh, for that. And then uh, last but not least, um, you know, really, you know, my, my brother Jared, Iron, Jared Irons and myself, we actually just actually just started a company called Omada Ventures. We actually um, specialize in a lot of unique te technologies, uh, products and services uh, for, for our customers. And so we're very excited about that. Jared, there's a lot to unpack there between <laughs> innovation, community impact. Yes. I know you are you have deep roots and your family means a lot to you, as you said, but yes. I want to go to something that I can relate to to start. Yeah, you're the absolutely. you're the youngest. Am I do I understand that right? I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest of three. Uh, my older brother you know, Jerry Irons, I call him Gerald Jr. Uh, he's the oldest, and then Jared, and then myself. Just take me back because I'm the youngest. I'm yeah. curious to know your perspective. Growing up in a family, um, you know, with with such deep ties of the community, but also yeah. sports. Right. What kind right. of lessons were instilled to you being the youngest and growing up in that type of environment? And that, that's a great question as well, Kyle. Uh, I was very fortunate and blessed to grow up in the family uh, and with my mother and father, you know, there um, actually seeing the love that they have for each other. Um, they really set uh, the standard, you know, for my two older brothers and myself. Um, they really, you know, one of the things that I've got to have the privilege is really to uh, not only grow up in that household, but actually observe and be almost like 24 seven. Um, they see, you know, a constant learning um, experience for me because, you know, a father and my mother, they've always instilled, you know, the, the importance of education, the importance of always giving back, you know, but, you know, they've accomplished a lot of different things, but at the end of the day, you know, seeing the love that they have for each other and, and keep in mind, my father actually passed away this past year around this time. So, um, you know, that's, Sorry to hear that. no, thank you. Thank you. But at the same time, you know, we lit, he lived a full life and each and every day, you know, myself, my mother, my brothers, you know, we loved our father tremendously. And we, there wasn't a day that, that went by that we didn't tell each, each other, uh, that we, that we love you. And, and, and you know, for that, you know, I always have those memories and always have, you know, the life lessons that he taught us, about truly, um, you know, helping each other, you know, whoever you, whatever, whether it's sports, whether it's academics, whether it's business, you know, give it your all, you know, you know, follow your passions, follow your heart and, and bring others that you know, are around with you, you know, to try to help other people become better. And that's some of the things I've learned from my father, my mother and my two older brothers. Grant, I, I think what's unique about you is just, the, the blend of community, family, you know, I, I've done some research. It seems like, you know, you're just meeting you, right? You're very open. You're very warm. But then also you excelled at sports, business. I guess what I'm getting at, was that just something that was instilled to you when you were young as far as like having the bigger, bigger picture uh, mentality, mm. right? Like it seems like, and I could be wrong, so take this question mm -hmm. wherever you want, but it seems like yeah. you've always had instilled within you a bigger purpose than just football or the bigger purpose than just kind of collegiate sports or sports in general, right? You're always a great yeah. student. You're right. always making an impact on the community. So if you right. could kind of give us a, a, a bigger picture as to like how, how that is, cause that's very impressive. Was that just something that was born right. and raised or you kind of always naturally been wired that way? Just curious. Yeah. Now, Hey, thank you for the question. Thank you for the compliments. Really appreciate that. I think, you know, it, it really ties back to, uh, you know, you know, just my youth and growing up and and just being surrounded, you know, each and every day. And it was like, you know, my, I see my father, see my mother, you know, you know, my, my older brother, Jerry and Jared. I mean, it's like, you know, being the youngest, you have you have the luxury of just sitting back and observing to see the things that they did or see the things that they didn't do. And how can you, you know, learn from what they do, what they did and how that you can implement that in your life. And they've always spoke life into me. You know, they've always encouraged me. And that's one thing that, you know, 
you know, my mother and father and my two older brothers, they've always encouraged me to really, you know, to, to just really be a well-rounded person. It was never like, even though like we've, you know, yeah, sports, I love, we, we love sports. I love sports. I love football. Don't get me wrong. But my parents, they've always instilled in us that, you know, never put all your eggs in one basket. You know, sports, you know, no matter how much you love it, how much you, do, you know, you put towards it, um, there's always an end point. Right. And there's always life out after football. So that was one of the things growing up. I and mean, I saw the transition. You got to understand, like our father, you know, he, he was amazing. You know, he um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, he was he was amazing because, uh, you know, he was very intelligent. You know, he not only was, you know, he, he played 10 years. Uh, in the NFL, but he was a player that in the off seasons, he actually went back and got it, got his NBA at the university of Chicago. Right. And I'm telling you, he was playing, you know, with the Raiders, you know, when the Raiders were really, really good, you know, they had legends you know, and, you know, I'm talking about Belenikoff, Arshel, Jack Tatum. And, you know, just seeing his dedication to always improving, to always getting better. And, and it wasn't just about athletics, but it was about the overall big picture of this, you know, being the best that you can be in every aspect, that, you know, in your life. And nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But just like I, what I love about when I'm, you know, playing with the Raiders and they talk about commitment to excellence. I mean, my father embodied that, you know, and, and it kind of trickled down to his sons, you know, to my older brothers and myself. And it's kind of things that we try to try to each and every day, you know, continue to, you know, you know, live that legacy and, and really, you know, continue to, to use that and, and, and propel us forward. Well, thank you, Grant, for sharing that. Um, you know, I, I could see how much your father meant to you and just given the bigger picture, because I think we can all relate. Right. Having role right. models. And it's even that much more impactful if it's someone directly in your household. Um, another thing you mentioned too that I can relate to is uh, being the youngest. Yeah. I think you're I think you're 100 right. Like you're naturally just observant by by Jump Street, right? Because you don't yeah. have any everyone else. Like your parents are busy, right? Yeah. There's other kids in the household, yeah. and you've got the advantage in the sense that you're kind of like just wired to be observant. I, I believe, and I can totally relate to what you're saying. And even being yeah. a father myself, awesome. we have a third child now, a son. Congratulations, and, on that, love it. Love it. And he's naturally just the most calm. And I bet he's going to be the most observant too. I don't know. Right. But I think there is something about being the youngest and how that's an advantage that you have. Oh yeah. Um, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. So Grant, I want to, I'm going to jump here. I want to, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Um, It's a segment now that we're calling the bigger picture. We're talking about the bigger picture. So I'm going to show a picture and we're just going to kind of riff and, and you kind of, paint the scene here. So I want to jump to Notre Dame. Oh, right? I love, it. love Notre Dame. Yes. Play like a champion. That's what it's about. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot I want to talk about here, but okay. just one, like, does anything replace this? Right. Yeah. Like, so I, I think everyone can relate to pivots, but it's interesting talking to a former, somebody who played at Notre Dame with such history, right. And then the NFL, which we'll, we'll touch on in a little bit. Yeah. Like, is there anything that replaces this feeling of running out under the uh, out of the tunnel? Kyle, man, I mean, just seeing this picture right here, I mean, it brings chills to me because it's like, you know, so many just as a kid, you know, you gotta understand. Like, I don't know if I mean you've seen the movie Rudy. I mean, I love Rudy, man. I just love that movie. And you know, when I see this, it's like, you know, as a kid, you know, you kind of you expire, you set your goal and you aspire to meet a certain you know point. And then when you actually get a chance, the opportunity to actually do that, and I'm seeing this, I mean, I would actually picture myself running through the tunnel, hitting that play like a champion sign. And I'm seeing it here. And it's like, man, seeing that is like, it, it's, it's so special. And, and you, the University of Notre Dame is a special place, you know, and it's, it's so, I, I love it in the fact that they, they really focus on, you know, growing the student athlete, um, as a, as a whole, you know, they re- really, you know, academics, you know, it was very important. The athletics was very important. You know, a lot of people ask me, why did I choose Notre Dame? You know, why did I choose, you know, yeah, I, I was, I could have gone any school in the country, right? I, had, I was, I was blessed and fortunate to have that, have that, that luxury. But when I looked at it, when it, when it broke down to it, you know, when I came down to it, 
I looked at, you know, I, I don't want to make a decision for the next four years. I want to make a decision on the next 40 years. And, you know, those that go to Notre Dame, they understand that because they, they, they hear it. They know, they know what I'm, when, I, when I say that, they understand that. And it's one of the things that I'm so grateful and thankful that, that I, I graduated from University of Notre Dame and, and was able to wear that gold helmet and, and run out that tunnel and hit that sign. It's like, man, and I, and I, I just, it's, it's a great feeling. I loved it. Are there any, is there a story that comes top of mind or any practical examples that you can give us, mm -hmm. those who can't relate, who don't know, as far as your time being there, you know, the play like a champion today culture, you yeah. kind of spoke about, it's really like-minded folks who know there, there's more, there's more than to just football. It's on the field, off the field, but is yeah. there a particular story maybe within practice or maybe a speech, or is there something that kind of resonates as it relates to that culture? Is there a tangible example you can give us? I mean, that's, a, that's another great question. I know for, I would say just the impact that Notre Dame has. I mean, and, and the, 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 they talk about the Notre Dame network. Um, you know, you understand when I was at Notre Dame, you know, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of different mentors, right? And, you know, these mentors made a huge impact in my development. And actually, I would credit, I, I graduated from the University of Notre Dame in the College of, Men, College of Business called the Mendoza College of Business, right? And Tom Mendoza, he's actually was the CEO of NetApp. He actually donated $40 million to start the Mendoza College of Business. Right. And, you know, man, Tom is amazing. He's a great, great person. Um, he was always, even though he was CEO and always busy, anytime I, I emailed him or reached out to him, he would get back to me instantly, like the same, you know, the same, like 30 minutes within the same hour. Like he was just, I mean, somebody that's like so multitask, so busy, he's like, he would always, anytime I reached out to him, he was there. And so I know one of the times where, and it's not. This is not so much of a, of a football story, but just the impact and the reach that Notre Dame can 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 um, can bring bring that brings to the table can bring to the table is that you know, I remember I've always been a big fan of, of Warren Buffett, right? And Warren Buffett, I've read his books. I, I've definitely have been a big admirer of how his his business acumen and and I want you know having a conversation with, with Tom and those are telling hey. I was a big fan and things like that. And it was an interesting story is that he was actually, it was my senior, basically my senior year. I remember this. We were actually about to play the University of Nebraska, right? They were the number one team in the nation. And I remember I got, I just got done working out. I was in my dorm room and I'm over here, you know, I'm just, you know, get, about to get ready to work out. And my phone rings. I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, I pick it up and I'm saying hello. And it's Warren Buffett on the phone. And I'm, I was like, I was floored. I was like, wow. He's like, yeah, I heard I heard a lot of great things about you from Tom Mendoza. And we were on a, a golf outing. Believe it or not, he was on a golf outing with it was t Tom Mendoza and Tiger Woods. You know, and so it's just it was like a full circle moment. And it was like, you know, one of the things he said, he's like, well, he said, how about, you know, I, I do a little wager for, you know, with you. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, well, you know, you give me the Notre Dame, you know, playbook. And in return, I'll give you two free stock tips. Right. And I was like, man, just <laughs> having that experience, you know, and then from there, he became, you know, you know, my mentor and a great friend. And, you know, I just he was always, you know, he flew out to Notre Dame. I got a chance to, you know, present, you know, my jersey to him. And um, you know, when he came and spoke to the Notre Dame and he's always been available and, and open and just, you know, he's just a, a great person, you know, very down to earth. And he's always he was always cared, he always cared about my well being as a person, and uh, I'm I'm forever grateful for that for both Tom Mendoza and Warren Buffett. Grant, there's a lot of parallels. Obviously, you know the man Warren Buffett, but I've read lots of articles, I've seen the videos, and something I think you there's a lot you both have in common. But but one thing that resonates with me is long term thinking. Um, there's something that there's this really there's this clip on Warren Buffett. I, I've seen it a few times and it's so mm -hmm. powerful mm -hmm. for those listening. I encourage you to Google it because I'm going to paraphrase here. Yeah. But generally speaking, he, he speaks to an audience and he says, if I were to tell you, you can have any car you wanted. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about anything. You can literally have any car 
you want. Yes. Pauses, you know, what are you thinking about? Right. And he goes, well, let me, let me tell you, there's only one exception. You have this car and it's the only car you have for the rest of your life. Yes. And, and the whole point of the exercise is to think, well, that changes things, right? Changes and he things. goes, you have one mind, you have one body. Yes. You know, in this lifetime, you, you should probably think about it in the same ways. Once again, I'm paraphrasing, but to me, yes. that was so powerful. That just gives you a little, little inside kind of into what Warren Buffett's mind and his success is. He's always been, whether he's investing yes. or he's putting his energy, a long-term thinker. And I think you yes. have some of the same qualities as well. Thank you, Kyle. I, I really appreciate that. You know, one of the things I, I, I would say this about, you know, Warren Buffett is that he always emphasized that, yeah, the long-term, you're right, the long-term thinking, the long-term, he always thought, you know, that way. But it really he he was very he he would always simplify it you know it's like and whatever you do you know love what you do you know it was almost like love what you do enjoy what you do and be passionate about it you know whatever like you said you only have one life to live so whatever you do be present in the moment love what you do and be passionate about it and it was like I've always remembered you know little gems like that that helped my development. You know, as, as a man uh, and, and, and as a student as a, and as an entrepreneur, a business owner, you know, those things like that. Very, you know, I've always remembered that and appreciate that. That's so cool. Um, I'm that. jumping here. So here's an article yeah. I found uh, through Notre Dame. This is your time playing at Notre Dame. I believe this is you going into your senior season. Yeah. But I wanted to grab some nuggets out of this article because it's, it's a lot. It's touching on a lot what we're talking about here says, in addition to representing the football program as vice president of student athlete advisory council, Iron's mm -hmm. long list of community involvement includes volunteer efforts for Habitat for Humanity, reading children's books to area elementary school students, mm -hmm. appearing in promotions sponsored by the University Office of Drug and Alcohol Education, mm -hmm. as well as numerous other activities associated with athletic department's life skills program. Irons was one of 11 Division I-A named to the 1999 Good Works team selected by the American Football Coaches Association, which recognizes service to both the university and the community, and the 1999-2000 Notre Dame Above and Beyond All Difference team. So, Man, just, just uh, yeah, it's, you, 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 you've done your homework. I'm impressed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just, I mean, let's try to unpack that. I mean, yeah. I guess it's just maybe the answer is simple, right? You don't know any different, right? Because you, you spoke about it earlier with your mentors and your father mm -hmm. and kind of the way that you were raised. But how did you, going back to your, uh, you know, collegiate athlete to, to, mm -hmm. to end this Notre Dame kind of talk? Because mm -hmm. I know that you got injuries, right? I think I read that you yeah, broke your leg. Yeah, my shoulder. Yep, absolutely. Yep. You jumped around positions. But yeah. no matter what, you always found a way to make an impact on the field. But more importantly... Mm -hmm. You always found a way to make an impact off the field. So how does someone who's 20, 19, 21 years old kind of manage to do all this at the same time between community work, football, rehab and injuries? Um, what kind of skills are involved in that? You know what? Hey, that, that's another great question, Kyle. Uh, you know, it really came down to one, you know, time management. You know, it's just really we all have 24 hours in the day. Right. And that's one thing I've learned from my parents, my brothers. We all have 24 hours in a day, right? It's what we do in those 24 hours would determine the success that we have, you know, day after day, right? And you know, when you have, you know, you mentioned it, yeah. I, I you know, I, I had, I've had injuries, you know, separate my shoulder actually in the Nebraska game, um, things like that. But no matter what you go through in life, and that's one of the things I guess I, I've learned, I've been grateful to learn, is that everything that happens to you. You know, you want to always be able to, you know, find a lesson in it and be able to apply that to always, you know, whatever, whether it's good or whether it's bad, it always generates or creates an energy, right? You want to use that energy to, to, you know, to your benefit, right? You want to have whatever happens, good or bad, no matter what, if anything, it's always a learning lesson, but you want to be able to take that, right? And use that energy to propel you forward. To be the best, you know, to, than you were the day before, and that's always been my philosophy, you know, in anything that I do. I don't, no matter what I, what academics, business, you know, just outside of sports, you know, it's just like er, everything you want to use it to your benefit because we all have just we all have twenty four hours in a day, and no matter what, 
it, it's always you want to use everything to, to propel you to, to get you better. You know, another, another one of my coaches, uh, actually, Greg Madison, he's my defensive line coach. He's like, you know, when you approach each and every day, you know, we all have, have a choice. And I was like, what, what's that? He said, we have a choice to either get better or get worse. And for me, every single day, one, I wake up and I think about the things that I've been blessed with, the things that I'm grateful for, and 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 and, and, and really kind of look at, you know, try to see, you know, what can I do? What can I do today to get better than I was the day before? And that's when it comes down to it, Kyle, that, that's in simple terms. That's what it that's what it comes down to. I love that, Grant. And um, you know, you know, something that you said there that, that really pulled at me is I think adversity, right? You can either have that tear you down or you mm -hmm. can use it to your benefit. And I can relate a little bit. I never played at the level you played, but I played uh, basketball all through high school and I tore my ACL meniscus my junior Ooh. year. Wow. And anyone who's gone through any type of like terror toward shoulder, torn ligaments, you know, rehab is a, yeah. it, it's quite the process, oh. right? And, and then you're really after is. surgery, you know, you can barely walk and you're like, how am I ever going to cut, run, jump, do all the things I know I need to do. Right. But, but I have found like even those moments of adversity or setbacks, so to speak, yeah. they build confidence. Yes. And to, to what yes. you said earlier is like that, that you can use that for you, for your benefit, or, you know, you can go the other way with it and be like, why me? Or, you know, coach doesn't yeah. like me or whatever. So I, I think that's right. powerful what you said there. Thank you. So, I appreciate that, Kyle. Appreciate it. And I apologize, man. I might get a little emotional sometimes, but I just I apologize about that. But hey, man. No, I, no, I no need it. to apologize. I just appreciate you being genuine and uh, taking Thank the time you. to do this. So, Thank Grant, you. I want to jump to the end. I mean, look at this guy. <laughs> Come on. I mean, I like even look, even during the course of this conversation, I forget that I'm talking to a dude who's what, 6'5", 275? Hey, hey, I would say 6'6", six, six, uh, about 285, you know. But, there you, know, you go. Yeah. But, see, uh, I'm even, I'm even underselling you. But yeah, like Appreciate through the course of this conversation, I'm forgetting, like, look at that vein, man. Like what that vein <laughs> and that bicep. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got Kurt Warner, Hall of Famer. Clearly you sacked um, him sitting over him. Man, um, good time. So man, you bring about like, you really did your homework. Like all this stuff, like, wow. Like seeing all this interesting. Wow. It's memory lane. We kind of touched on it, but like yeah. we'll talk about your experience in the NFL. But like I'm looking at this picture, right? Right. And it's just it amazes me how you can and maybe you have kind of tunnel vision focus. Focus is something Warren Buffett talks about. He does. But like yeah. talk to me about like how you go from your grant, you know, the the community servant, the yeah. brother, the, the the kind person, the jokester, right off the field. Right. To somebody when between those lines, seems like it's a very competitive, different person. Compare and yeah. contrast that mentality. Is it different? Kind of talk through that if you wouldn't mind. Oh, without a doubt. And that's one of the things, like, that's a very good question as well. Like, that's one of the things, like, my father, like, you know, I actually literally had the same conversation with him. I was like, early on as a kid, I was like, man, how, how do you turn it on? How do you do this? Like, you know, he basically, he, he simplified it in a way, like, you look at, like Superman, right? The Superman, you know, he, you know, one hand he's Clark Kent, but then there's another way when he goes in that booth, he comes out, he, it's almost like he, he flips a switch and he turns, he, he turns it on Superman. Like for us, like in between the lines, it's like, man, it, 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 it's, it's game time. You know, we're, we're, we're like, take no prisoners. It's like, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's almost one of those things that, you know, each and every, whoever's like whoever, if you're on the other side of that ball and you're you know our team is our team we're we're, we're one right we're going for the win we're going you know whoever it is what we have to do to, to make this happen we're going to make it happen and then you know so we're going to compete to the utmost uh to our abilities but then when that when that whistle when the end of the game you know when you're you're done with that game you know you, you flip that switch and then you turn into grant irons the person grant irons the man grant irons the, the you know the person that you know I, you know I'll take my shirt off on my back and you know, anybody that needed you know and, and help and, you know like you saying habitat for humanity things like that you know but it's it's almost like you have to car um car uh, mentalize our or car mentalize our um our abilities and our focus you know it's like you're not that 
football player, you're, you're more than just a football player. You, you know, that you just got to be a well-rounded person. And that was kind of, you know, how I go about, or how I went about doing that. It's funny. I was watching uh, the new season of Hard Knocks. They're doing the uh, Detroit Lions. Yeah. And Deuce, Deuce Staley is the running back coach. And I forget the gentleman's name who's on the defensive side, but he's hitting on what you're talking about right now, which is like, they're friends. He's like, I love that guy. That guy's oh, my brother. Right but yeah. he goes between the lions. He goes, I want to kill him. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, without a doubt, you you want to take their heads off. Like, it's it's what it is. It's what it is. I mean, it's what's fun. It's just like we understand. Like, we all have families. We all have you know goals to, to meet and want to accomplish. And it's like when you're in between those lines, it's like it's take no prisoners. It's like it's let's go. Uh, selfish sports fan question here. I know you played against some yeah. great players. Who is the one person yeah. on the field that you played against with whatever that just you were like, this dude is different. Like this dude is just not like the rest of us. He's on a league of his own. Is there <laughs> one player who kind of jumped off like that? Uh, you know what? Actually, you no, know, I was a defensive man and linebackers. I play all on the defensive side, right? Um, we actually had the opportunity when we played Dallas Cowboys. And we played against Larry Allen. And I've never seen somebody so strong, so athletic, and just be able to do anything that he wants to do on the field, he could do. And, you know, I've you know, seen him actually, like, basically somebody go full speed at him, and he'll basically just bench press him, lift him up, and just throw him five to ten yards. And I was like, wow. I mean, I've never seen, like, he was an amazing athlete, uh, amazing player. Um, also, I would say uh, – Jonathan Ogden. I mean, he was another amazing athlete um, for the Baltimore Ravens. And he was just, he made it look so easy, you know. Um, I had the opportunity, definitely, uh, I mean, just as teammates. I mean, I was very fortunate, you know. And I, yeah, I think I, I got a chance to play with Randy Moss, you know, Tim Brown. I mean, those are all people that I admire and respect. Um, and it was just, man, it was, it was, it was so Charles Woodson. I mean, it was, I was very fortunate to, to, to get a chance to actually play with them and you know, for me, it was more like, you know, wow, I was just like, when you're in the room, it's almost like those, those guys are amazing. I mean, just to see, you know, good people just and great athletes and uh, just to learn from their work ethic. I think that's one of the things I, I took away from them is just like, how can you always get better? You know, and that's one thing that was interesting. So like a lot of my teammates, there's some teammates that they don't even know my name. They actually, a lot of my teammates name me, they call me game ready, right? And that, that's, they all basically... I always believe you, you practice how you play and it's, you know, always going and practice is that you always constantly want to try to get better. And so, you know, a lot of, I always have a lot of respect for a lot of my teammates and, um, and, and, and I was fortunate to have some great experiences with them. And, um, and it's, it's always a great time, you know, get a chance to, you know, live those memories and be able to um, communicate you know, with them. So very fortunate for that experience. That's awesome. And thanks for sharing. And you mentioned Randy yeah, Moss. I just, Randy Moss made it just look so easy, you know. Yeah, he really did. Yeah, he yeah, he really did. Absolutely. And some of those catches, you're just like, I mean, I think they have segments called "You Just Moss Somebody," you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh so, yeah. Now he was a great teammate. He was a great teammate. That's crazy. Um, so Grant, you know, uh, high school standout, Notre Dame, played in the NFL. Talk to us a little bit because I think even anybody kind of switching careers or thinking about doing something different. Talk to us yeah. about kind of your retirement from the NFL and what do I do next? And kind of how did you approach kind of the next phase of your life? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I think for, for me, it was always constantly moving forward. I mean, there's definitely an adjustment, you know, from a professional athlete to, uh, you know, life after football. Without a doubt, there is. I mean, it just, it, it definitely is. But once you actually, you know, the thing you can do is really, you know, just become busy and surround yourself with a group, have a great support system. Right. And I think for me is that, yeah, I was fortunate enough to have, you know, two older brothers and, you know, and family around to see that. But I think for me, it's like once, you know, seeing my older brother, you know, he's, you know, he spent like 20 years, he's been spending like 20 years at Smith and nephew as vice president, uh, knee replacements, hip replacements. And I was, as I was playing, I was thinking, I said, you know, I want to be able to transition you know, from my second, you know, from my first career to my second career. And that's how I pretty much transitioned into the medical field, medical device sales. And it was, you know, really, it was almost like, you know, just 
you know, really not having a, a down period. It's just constantly moving, constantly moving forward. And it's almost like falling forward. You, you might not have all the answers, but just keep going. And eventually, you know, things will be will, will fall in line and, and you'll get to your destiny. And that's kind of, you know, basically how where I'm at right now. And I just want I just want to keep this momentum going and keep getting better. So that that medical device sales, what? Yeah. What was it about that that, you know, because a lot of people talk about, well, you need to be passionate. I think you mentioned that earlier. You know, you you want to get better at what you do. Kind of what was the interest there for you? I think I might know the answer here, but curious to know. Yeah, I mean, it's a number of things. Right. One is that, I mean, it's almost like a competitor. It's like each and every day, you know, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's very intense. I mean, you're actually in the operating room, you know, in scrubs. And, you know, it's, it's awesome to see, you know, you know, from the medical perspective, and I have so much respect for nurses and for doctors and those that are in the medical field, you know, each and every day, it's almost like game game day. And actually to be able to see that, you know, and see, you know, you know, how how, how the magic happens and the impact that they have, you know, on patient lives. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, I think now, you know, I have the opportunity and there's a lot of medical solutions that we that we do um that make an impact in people's lives you know for example one is that we actually there's a thing called amniotic tissue graft right tissue grafts you know anybody that has personal wounds that you know um that have stage three or stage four these actually have specific cytokines and growth factors that can really make an impact you know in patients lives you know basically um their quality of life and so we partner with a lot of hospital systems a lot of clinics um, and it covers, you know, from head to toe. I mean, it can be, yeah, we can do um, podiatrists and vascular surgeons, plastic surgery, um, it, orthopedics. And so it's a wide range of, of, of areas where we can impact. But, you know, for us, it's just seeing the impact that it can really, you know, change somebody's life. That they, you know, one hand, they tried one way and it didn't work. And it's like they didn't have any, um, any hope. But then, you implement a medical device or a, a medical solution that, man, they can really improve their quality of life. I mean, it's a great feeling. I think something, you know, that, that's a hot topic in any industry, right, mm-hmm. is innovation. And uh, I, I think medical and just the businesses you've been involved with. Mm-hmm. Can you speak a little about lessons learned as it relates to innovation, meaning innovation of product, innovation of service? Yeah. Kind of what have you learned in your post-retirement career, whether that's in the medical side or what you're doing now? Any lessons learned as it relates to innovation? That could be what makes innovation, what are the sources of innovation, uh, anything on that area? Yeah, another great question. I, mean, I think for that is basically, you know, it, you know, having that thirst of knowledge and being able to explore and be able to, you know, there's, there's, there's more than one way to skin a cat or more than one way to do things, right? And just because, you know, this worked in the past, you can always get better and improve. You know, it's a constant theme throughout. It's like, you know, there's always, the technology is amazing and, and medical field is amazing. And to see how things change from year after year and their improvements and how you can um, and create, you know, efficiencies throughout the system and, 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 and then see, you know, actually see that impact man, I love it. You know, and so, you know, when I go, you know, so that's on the medical side, on the medical field, and then when I, you know, talk about like the behavioral side, on the behavioral, like we focus a lot um, on the behavioral health, mental fit, mental fitness, things like that, is that, you know, we're focused on, you know, right now there's a lot of things out there that are, you know, you know, reactive, right? You know, when, I, when it's an issue comes up or somebody has a problem, that's when they start taking action. But how about what if we could be proactive and really identify the early signs and nip that in the bud so that it doesn't become a bigger issue? So, like for us, we focus on, you know, I, I call it, you know, P E I. So, prevention and early intervention, right? So, if there's anything that we can implement, you know, ahead of time and, 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 you know, in medical, a lot of people, there, anytime you can implement, you know, technologies and medical, um, you know, um, solutions, you have a, a greater clinical outcome for success, right? It's when you wait later um, to implement those solutions is that that outcome for success is less. I mean, there's clinical studies that show that. So for us, 
the early implementation, the earlier, the better. That's how we look at it. I want to stay on that for a minute because I think that's beneficial for this conversation is what I have found. And, you know, I've done just some basic research here, but majority as we kind of modernize and step into this new era, okay. mental health is more of a hot topic because more people are struggling with it. And that could be Absolutely. stress, anxiety, uncertainty. So any tips for those out there? Because, you know, so many people are busy. Um, right. They have kids, right? They're, they have a full career. Mm -hmm. Any tips you would provide as far as things that you could do, practical examples right. to help with your mental health? I, I love that question right there, right? So, you know, I, I'm very fortunate to, to partner, to be an executive partner, like I said, for the, the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame Health, um, Behavioral Health, and just seeing the great work that they do each and every day, the impact, I mean, it's amazing. And so what I like about what they, you know, what we do, what they do from a day-to-day -day basis is that not only is it for, you know, military veterans, not only is it for, you know, professional athletes, but it's actually for just for the, for the community, for fans. You know, they can tap into um, the, the, a lot of the benefits and, and scholarships that they can help raise money. So, so, so say somebody is going through a tough time, a rough patch, right? You know, they actually, you know, we actually have like a 24 hour concierge service that we can go in there and really surround, you know, surround that person, you know, with the love and the care to get the results or get the, the help they need. Right. And there are a lot of things that are, you know, there are a lot of, um, you know, programs out there that don't do that, that on the front end. They most sort of do that on the back end. So, I mean, the, the advice that I would give them is, you know, you know, Surround yourself with people that love you. Surround yourself with help. Don't try to do it by yourself because it's 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 so hard, right? And there are there are resources out there. Utilize your resources, you know, like you know the behavior, you know, Hall of Fame Health, and, and a lot of the programs that are out there. And then, I mean, I'm, there's more than just those programs, but there's, just tap into those resources um, to get the help that you need. I think you'll have a greater uh, appreciation and benefit and outcome um, in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we are blessed to, you know, that that is more, there's more spotlight put on it yeah. and there's more attention to some of these resources and some of the mm -hmm. ones you just mentioned there. Absolutely. Um, remind me, Grant, yeah. um, I, I believe I know this story, but I, I, I don't want to assume or get anything incorrect. You wanted, mm -hmm. you thanked our, our GM, Peter Arceo. Um, remind me, how is it that you two met? <laughs> oh man, P Peter is, a, he's such a great, great person. Um, interesting enough. So before, um, so, so I'm actually, actually a brand ambassador for the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm, I'm very grateful and fortunate for that. So I actually speak to a lot of fortune 500 companies, um, do a lot of motivational speaking, things like that. And it, I was actually at a game, right. And we were actually meeting, I was actually in the, in the, in the corporate suites meeting with a lot of our, our partners and believe it or not, one of your previous um, podcast attendees, Hector Fernandez, uh, the, the CEO of Aristocrat. Great, yep. great guy. I uh, love mm -hmm. that guy. And, um, and I actually had the opportunity to speak to his corporation as well. They, man, they're, they're doing a lot of amazing work. They do like, they've done like, I think 4.5 billion revenue annually. It's, it's amazing. The great work they do in gaming. Um, but he actually, they were actually, he introduced me to Peter Arceo. Right. He's the one that connected me to Peter. Uh, they were actually going to the Pro Bowl um, th this past this past year and uh, invited me to come out. I was unable to, to make it that day. I think I had a, a prior engagement. But um, since then, you know, making that connection, I'm, I'm forever grateful to Hector. And, and I'm so grateful um, for the friendship with Peter is that, man, just having the opportunity to speak with Peter and see his leadership and what, you know, his passion um, for Yamava, you know, resorts and casinos, and just for, you know, for the employees is amazing. And I, I, I'm actually like the whole thing that you're talking about being a younger child and being observant. I mean, I've, I've learned so many lessons just observing Peter and his leadership, you know, and, and I'm very grateful for that. And so y'all are very fortunate to have uh, Peter there at, at, at the helm, at, at the leadership position. And there's a lot of great things, you know, that are going to be coming uh, your way. I'm very confident in that. 
Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you mentioned two past podcast guests. So Peter was our first guest and, and Hector yeah. was on a podcast too. And I you, I mean, what's really cool about me getting an interview, you know, yourself and, and, and all yeah. these people is there's different roads to success, but there's still some core qualities that are all similar. Um, and yeah. especially with these leadership positions like yourself, whether it's Peter, Hector, uh, Jennifer yeah. Lodge, Laura, all, all yeah. of our past guests, you know, humble, approachable, um, competitive um, in some cases, yeah. um, but understand that it takes a team, right? And it just mm. um, all these different things. So, um, yeah, it, it's just amazing. So, you know, once again, uh, Grant, thanks again. You know, I have a few final questions here for you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I enjoyed this. I mean, I, I, I appreciate the great work that you do. That Serena, uh, I got a chance to get to know her. She's awesome as well. I mean, just your whole leadership team. Um, Y'all do an amazing job. And I, again, I'm very grateful and fortunate to be a part of the great things that y'all do. And I look forward to doing more in the future. Thank you. And I know that you've, you've and thank you again. And I know you've spoken with many different leadership groups, right? Uh, yes. motivational speaking, business practices across several different sectors, right? Right. What, right. what have you learned? And basically, you know, if you had to narrow it down to maybe, um, I'm kind of asking the, the end question here okay, early, yeah. but it's a little different, but it's a little different. Okay. So okay. I guess it's not quite the same. Okay. But as you've observed, because Warren Buffett, you talked about the relationships you've made at speaking to some of these different companies with different leaders. I guess in your perspective, and then growing up in such a great family atmosphere, being observant that you mm -hmm. are, what have you recognized right. as far as maybe a, a quality or two that all kind of successful people have in common? Wow. I, I love that question. And I would actually bring it back. So there's a couple of things I can, you know, I can go with that. But one is that I actually got a chance to meet, um, I'm very fortunate uh, to meet uh, the CEO of Intermountain Healthcare, right? His name, uh, Dr. Harrison, Dr. Mark Harrison, right? And one of the things I learned from him and you know, meeting his wife, Mary Carroll, I mean, amazing, they're amazing individuals, they're amazing people, right? One of the things I've learned from them is that he, he always says these, these three letters and three words, which are R- F P relentless forward progress. When you implement those things, no matter what you go through, you will always be successful. If you're relentless, if you're constantly moving forward. And I promise you, you will have progress. And you know, that right there, like is the essence. Like you mentioned Hector, you mentioned, you know, Peter, you know, at the core of, of what we all do, nobody, you know, at the end of the day, we're all relentless and we're always constantly moving forward. And I think that in itself, I always believe I'm saying is that activity always yields results. If you're sitting still, don't expect <laughs> to, to, to hit your goals. You constantly got to be moving. You constantly not only just be moving, but you constantly got to be moving forward. Right. Productively. And as a team, you have I mean, we you know, we've all been on teams. We've all been on leadership, you know, being leaders of teams. You got to identify early on, where do you want to go um, as a team, right? Yeah, you, you had a good year last year. How can we step it up and go and, and be be better than we did, were the year before, right? In order to do that, you got to be relentless. We got to set the bar even higher. So let's be relentless. Let's constantly move forward. And I promise you, we'll have success. Wow. I wrote down a couple of things there. Activity always yields, yields results. Mm -hmm. RFP, relentless forward progress. Um, mm -hmm. Taking it back to sports, um, yeah. I'm sure this is an obvious and I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask it because I'm sure you've been around talented individuals, right? And then I'm yeah. sure you've been around people who are maybe not as talented, but their work ethic was what got them to where they So. Yeah. Where do you kind of fall as it relates to someone who's super talented versus to someone who might not be as talented, but man, are they a workhorse? You know what? I mean, I guess I bring it for I simplify it this way. Like if you look at um, 
you know, I mentioned, you know, Rudy, you know, the movie Rudy. You look at Rocky, you got look the underdog and just <laughs> that, that tenacity. You know, that's kind of things like for me, when they call me game ready. You know, I'm going to have all the statistics in the world. That wasn't that wasn't my thing. My thing was that, hey, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to give it my all each and every day, no matter what comes my way. All right. I can get through anything. Right. I truly believe that with the help of the smile. My support system, my teammates, my coaches, the, you know, and the thing is that you know you gotta truly going back to Warren Buffett, you gotta love, love what you do and be passionate about it, no matter what, you know. And so, and I think that right there, I mean, I guess that kind of embodies like my spirit is that you know it's just that constantly, each and every day, you show up. You know, it's a new day, it's a new slate. Let's go, let's attack, let's move forward, and that's it. Just keep it simple. If 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 you, if you fall. Fall and you and you and you you may fall. It's okay, but if you fall, make sure you've fallen forward. You you know, Grant, you have so much energy. It seems like you kind of attack the day. What are you excited yeah. about most for your future? Say five, ten years from now, what do you hope to be doing, or where do you hope this momentum takes you? Man, I, I love that question. I think for us, um, I think that you know, constantly, I want to continue to create. Um, you know, more ventures, more business ventures uh, with in partnership with my brother, uh, Jared, and we have some other business partners. Um, but, you know, you know, the money, I'm not really focused on that more say more. So I'm focused on the impact, right, that we can have in people's lives. You know, I really focus on not only making an impact, but making a, a, a positive, lasting impact. And so I think for us is that, you know, we want to touch everything, you know, we whether it's like I said, whether it's in healthcare, healthcare or outside of healthcare, we just want to be able to impact people's lives and change it for the better. Again, better than it was, you know, before we got there, better than the day before. And I think for us is that, you know, we can continue to create strategic partnerships. I think we can achieve those goals. And I think that there's so many great people doing great work all across the country, you know, and and many industries. And I think for us is is that we want to connect a lot of dots and connect a lot of, uh, you know, great thinkers and and bring it all together so that we truly do make an impact and and it's it's memorable. So we're definitely looking forward to that and and very grateful and fortunate uh, for that. Grant, and that seems like that's just part of your DNA. You always kind of follow where you make the most impact, whether that's changing people's lives in the medical field or within your businesses, even football, right? You are always going back to the community. And I think that's important as we talk about careers in general. Right. Is I, I think that a lot of us fall into, we've talked about this in previous discussions, but it's easy to fall into comfort or where I make more money or things of that nature. And it seems like you've always kind of avoided that because let's be honest, in the NFL, there's Lots of people who have ego, right? Where do you go? You're, you're bigger, your stature, right? You're famous in a lot of ways, or you are famous, right? And you've always seemed, you know, for the most part, it seems like you've always followed where you make the most impact and you haven't let that ego get to you. And that, that's pretty incredible. Hey, thank you, Kyle. I appreciate that. So I actually just flew back in town. I was just literally uh, yesterday, the day before, I was actually in Denver, Colorado, right? And I was actually, like I said, I'm executive partner for Hall of Fame Health and Behavioral Health. Um, and we actually threw a fundraiser, a dinner, um, you know, for 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 a lot, you know, a lot of Denver Broncos uh, were in attendance. A lot of Hall of Famers were in attendance. And we raised a lot of money for military veterans and, and professional athletes. And it was an interesting um, moment when I was there at the dinner, right? So there was a, was a person there. His name is Chad Brown. <laughs> Man. I get choked up a little bit because, you know, his name is Chad Brown. You can Google him. He, he's a great person, uh, you know, many time over Pro Bowl, um, you know, with Pittsburgh Steelers, Seattle Seahawks. And I remember um, when I first you know, graduated from Notre Dame and, and I was getting ready for the NFL, you know, your training at the time, you know, at the time I had, you know, a trainer, actually his name is Lauren Landau. He's actually um, the head trainer for the Denver Broncos. Great, great trainer, great, great person. And he was able to get um, Chad Brown to come and personally train uh, train us, like give us a trip to the trade, 
you know, you know how I mean at this time he was bigger than in our minds he was like Superman. I mean he you know played Pittsburgh Steelers amazing. But one of the things I and I got a chance to express this to him and his wife at the dinner is that you know I haven't seen him since that time and I told him you know you know thank you you know for really you know making an impact on my life and you know the people that we were training is that you know as big as he was and the biggest you know biggest person. He was always so down to earth and so humble and so being, you know, he was so willing to help us. And it was like, man, he, it made a huge impact in my life. And I really had a got a chance to you know, express that to him. And I can tell that he was grateful for that. And his wife was grateful when she, you know, thank it, you know, you know, real thankful for that. And it was just like a full circle, full circle moment. And so things like that is that, you know, you ne never know who you may impact. You never know whose path you're going to cross. But, you know, for us, you know, I think, you know, as, as a human beings is that we can just, you know, each and every day be present in a moment, you know, kind of like be where your feet are at and, 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 and just really be able to do what you can do in the moment and just try, try to help bring others along and move them forward. So I think that's, you know, I really try to focus on that. Yeah. And that's evident, um, you know, right. just talking to you and also just researching and seeing what others have to say, say about you. It's, it's consistent across the board. Um, Thank you. What does Grant do to disconnect then? You know, when you're not right. involved with all these different obligations that you're talking about, are you like a Netflix person? Are you like an outdoors person? What family, what, what is it that you kind of go to, to kind of disconnect? Yeah, actually, I mean, family is everything. So I definitely spend a lot of time with my family. That's the way I, I disconnect. I love working out. I love trying to, you know, you know, stay in shape, things like that. Um, yeah, definitely. I love Netflix. I love a lot of shows. Um, you know, there's a lot of different shows that I watch. You know, what's I mean, your show right now? I like, like an Abbott Elementary. That's a very you know funny one. Um, you bring it back to the Office. Yeah, you know, I'm always. You know, those are classic. I love the Office. Um, you know, anything that is funny, that's adventurous, I, I love. Um, movies wise, you know, I just actually I watched uh, Top Gun. I, I love that movie, the, the, the new Top Gun. Um, and I also watched uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, that was I enjoyed that as well. So, you know, things like that. I, I love I'm always, you know, big on books. I love reading. Um, you know, I, I, I'm big on reading. So um actually my, my parents actually wrote a book it was called preparation when preparation meets opportunity things like that so anything that's like self-help you know that, that that can you know improve yourself i'm constantly like i'm just like a sponge for that so uh, anything self-help attitude is everything uh written by keith harrell uh, i love his book like things like that that i can just pour into myself that's what i like to do that's it really you mentioned uh, top. You you mentioned Top Gun. I don't see the mustache. It feels like everyone who watches Top Gun they leave there with some mustache. I know, right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple. This is a couple last ones here. Who's yeah. gonna win the AFC West this year? Man, hey, I, I'm pulling for the Raiders. Come on now, like. Nah, no, I know. I should know better. Hey, come on. Now. Hey, you know what? They actually, I believe they're gonna have a great year this year. I mean, a lot of the key additions that they made, uh, the coaching staff. I mean, I think they're gonna really surprise a lot of people, and I think they're gonna do well this year. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for them absolutely, and um, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, I know you just made Serena uh, and also our CEO Kenji uh, pretty happy with that prediction. They're both. Really <laughs> My wife is a Kansas City Chiefs fan. She's from uh, that area, uh, so we'll uh, see. A lot hey. of people are sleeping on them since uh, Tiger Hill yeah. left, and that's true. Hey, but, you know, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be an exciting year. I mean, there's a lot. of a lot of new additions to a lot of teams and it's going to be interesting. I mean, I think if you get a, a, you know, early on a good start and then you can really, you know, generate that momentum and just let that momentum carry you throughout to the playoffs. And then when you get to the playoffs, man, it's really is who, who, who wants it more, you know, who's hungry. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. It's such a stacked division now. It really is. Uh, absolutely. It really uh, is. Grant, I always get everybody out here on the final question here, yeah. which is, next level right we're trying to you've hit on so many good ones um as far as how can you progress in your career okay so if, if you were to anybody it doesn't matter what you do what position you're in okay if, if there's only three things that someone should do today or they could start doing today 
to right. take their career to the next level, what would you say those three things are? Hey, I actually give you four things. Love right. It. So D C F S, right? Decide, commit, focus, succeed. Keep it simple. That's what it is right there. That in a nutshell, that that's what I would encourage those to do. Decide, commit, focus, and succeed. So look at that, Grant. I mean, you're going above and beyond. You're giving us a fourth. Uh, I think that's <laughs> I had, this is next level. So I, that's right. I that's right. Um, <laughs> Grant, you provided so much value here today. You're an inspiration, you. right, for your Thank character. You. Not only just what you've accomplished, but I think more importantly, just your character and just your kind of natural pull to make an impact on others. So once again, I know there's a lot you could be doing uh, to take the time to appear on this podcast and, and help us out. And, you know, hopefully the listeners got a lot of uh, a lot of nuggets that they could apply to their career. I'm sure they have. But once again, just genuinely. Thank you, Grant. Hey, thank you, Kyle. I really appreciate that. Thank you again to Peter Arceo. And I really appreciate the time and the effort that you put into this podcast. You do a great job, Kyle. Thank you. Appreciate that, Grant. Thank you. Have a good day. Hey, you too. All right. Take care. Check out more episodes on nextlevelcasinocareers.com.